In this video, I will show you how to solve a system of two homogeneous first-order linear difference equations. Then I will show you how to draw such a system in a phase diagram. In particular, I will sh first show you how to generally solve such a system. Then I will show you at an example how to solve it. And lastly, I will draw exactly the same example in a phase diagram. Let's start with the general form. In general, a linear system of first order difference equations, of two first order difference equations, is written like this. The system is homogeneous because there's no additional term here, and we assume that yt plus 1 and yt are vectors. A is a 2 by 2 matrix and does not depend on time. Now, if you have a system like that, the general solution is yt, which is equal to y1t and y2t, so a vector of individual variables, is equal to some constant times the first eigenvector times the first eigenvalue to the power of t plus some second constant times the second eigenvector times lambda 2 to the power of t. Note that this solution only works if the matrix A has two distinct and real eigenvalues. So if the eigenvalues are complex, you cannot use this formula, or if both eigenvalues are the same, you cannot use this formula. Okay. Now let's have this formula and let's use actually a system to which we can apply this formula. Let's take the following system. Y t plus 1 t is equal to 2 y1 t plus 5 y2 t and y, sorry, um, y1 t plus 1 y2 t plus 1 is equal to y1 t plus 4 y2 t. Okay, so let's assume we have this system. Uh, let's keep that formula here. Go ahead and erase this general form. So we have this system. Now to solve this system, we first need to figure out what are the eigenvalues and what are the eigenvectors. So let's find those. So let's write first the system in the matrix. So the A matrix is equal to 2, 5, 1, 4. And based on this matrix, we can get the eigenvalues by the characteristic polynomial. So 2 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus 5 equals 0. Right? Now we can multiply it out. So we get lambda squared minus 6 lambda. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 5 is 3, plus 3 equals 0. Now this we cannot put in a simple, simpler form, so we need to apply the formula to solve quadratic equations. In particular, if you have a quadratic equation, x1, 2 is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, where a is the coefficient on the x squared, b is the coefficient on x, and c is the remainder. Now in this case, a is equal to 1, so we can simplify it. Minus b halves, and the term in the square root becomes the b squared over 4, and here we have minus 4ac, since a is 1, and we divide by 4, it's just minus c. Okay? Now, if we apply this formula here, what we get is lambda 1 is the plus sign, so minus b half is 3, plus the square root, b squared is 36, divided by 4 is 9, 
minus 3 is 6. So square root of 6 and lambda 2 will be equal to 3 minus the square root of 6. So let's find the eigenvectors. First eigenvector, um, we will have to plug this into the A matrix. So subtract lambda from the diagonal, then multiply this matrix, the resulting matrix, times first eigenvector must give us zero. So in the top left corner, we will get minus one minus square root of six, five, one, one minus square root of six. And we can simply take the eigenvector five, one plus square root of six. Okay? For me too, so the second eigenvector, we do the same here. So we subtract lambda from the diagonal, and we get minus 1 plus square root of 6, 5, 1, 1 plus square root of 6. And we can get the second eigenvector, which will be equal to 5, 1 minus square root of 6. OK, so we can plug it into this formula here, where we get y1 t y2 t will be equal to some constant 1 times the first eigenvector 5 of 1 plus square root of 6. Lambda 1 was this, so 3 plus square root of 6 to the t plus c2 5 1 minus square root of 6. And we have here lambda 2, which was 3 minus square root of 6 t. And this is our final solution, unless we get two initial conditions. So for example, y10 is equal to some constant, and y20 is equal to some other constant. And with that, you can find c1 and c2. OK, now that we found this general solution, Let's draw the system in a phase diagram. Actually, before we do that, note that if the lambdas are an absolute terms greater than 1, this will be an explosive system. If it's an absolute terms less than 1, it's a converging system. If we look at the two eigenvalues, the square root of 6 between 2 and 3, so the first eigenvalue is between 5 and 6. And the second one is between 0 and 1. So the first eigenvalue would tell its explosive system, while the second one would say it's actually a convergent system. So let's see how that looks in the phase diagram. So for the phase diagram, we can erase almost everything. All we need is the initial equations, but we want to write them in a slightly more convenient form because we want to have the change in y1t and the change in y2t. So we subtract y1t from the first equation and y2t from the second equation, which leads to the expression we need, minus y1t and minus y2t. So we have the change in y1 and the change in y2. So we get y1 t plus 5 y2 t and we got um, y1 t plus 4 sorry 3 y2 t and we can draw this now into a nice diagram let's put on the vertical axis y2 t and on the horizontal y1 t and we want to draw the lines for these two equations where they are equal to zero. So where either there's no vertical movement because the change in y2 is equal to zero, or there's no horizontal change because the change in y1 is equal to zero. OK, to do so, we need to solve this expression for y2 because y2 is on the vertical axis. Um, and we get y2 
t is equal to minus 1 over 5 y1 t for the first equation and y2 t is equal to minus 1 third y1 t for the second equation. This implies that 1 over 5 is flatter than 1 over 3, but both have a negative slope, so I can draw one line flatter and the other one steeper. The flatter one is 1 over 5, so this was the first equation, so the change in y1 t was equal to 0, and the second one was a steeper one, so the change in y2 t is equal to 0. Okay? Now we have, we also note that point zero, 0 is always a solution because if y1 is equal to y2 is equal to 0, then this difference is also 0. So that's always a stable point. Okay, now let's get to dynamics. Let's start with the change in y1. So we look at this line here, which corresponds to this equation up here. We move vertically up from this line. So we had this was equal to 0. Now we move vertically up, so y2 increases. As y2 increases, the change here increases 2. And since it's t plus 1 minus t, that means y1 increases. So we move to the right. And below the converse, we move to the left. Note that these two lines create four distinct areas, and for all four areas we need to determine which direction the dynamics go. Okay, let's repeat that for y2, delta y2, t equals zero, which we will have to look at this line. And we look to the right of this line, y1 is larger. If y1 is larger, this is higher, so y2 is increasing. So we have an up arrow to the right of this line, and the dynamics point downwards to the left of that line. If we look at the general picture, we find that these two areas are explosive. So any point here will be drawn to minus infinity, minus infinity, and this one will go to plus infinity, plus infinity. But there might be here, it's looking more towards the center. It's not completely clear if it will always go to the center, but there will be some path along which it will converge to this point, which is called the saddle path. So except for this one line here, which is called the saddle path, along which it will converge to this stable point, it will explode. And this should give you exactly the same picture as you got from calculating the solution of this system in general, where you found that one eigenvalue was less than one in absolute terms and the other eigenvalue was more than one in absolute terms. Thank you for watching.